It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 41st annual Scholar and Feminist Conference Sustainabilities. 41 years, this is our 41st. That too is an incredible, um, an incredible accomplishment. Um, I need to also say that this is my very first Scholar and Feminist that I've organized and I am so thrilled, amazed, and inspired by the turnout, by the response, by everybody's participation and commitment to this theme. I need to begin by thanking everybody in this room for that to begin with, so thank you for that. Um, I want to convene us by doing four things. The first thing is I'm going to say a few words of gratitude um, because there's always room for gratitude in, at an event like this. The second thing I want to do is make a couple of very important announcements. Um, then I'm going to give you a few framing comments for the conference, things to think about, to chew on, to sort of orient yourselves going through the day. Um, and then I'm going to introduce our fabulous keynote speaker. So thanks. Um, I need to begin by thanking many people um, who made this event possible because as you will see throughout the course of the day, Scholar and Feminist always has a lot of moving parts. And there are a number of people who make those moving parts actually move well together. I need to express a huge thanks to Amanda Gates Elston in events management and Goldie Jewer who does our catering. These are the two people who feed and house you and make you comfortable in the space that is Scholar and Feminist in the space that is Barnard College. So please join me in thanking them. I need you to direct your attention to the group of people over here around the technology, including Ken, who is in the background, but who is instrumental to allowing us to hear each other, to allow, for allowing us to speak to each other, and for allowing us to have the material to actually spread these words on the web. And that's our IMATS technology team. So thank you to you for all, of you, all that you do behind the scenes and behind the cameras. There are a bunch of floating students who are our research assistants, Krish, Kiara, Dania, Melissa, Emma, and Kat, who you'll be seeing. Some of you met them at registration. Some of you will meet them over the course of the day, helping you, guiding you through this building. Thank you to them, too, who have given up a Saturday um, for this event. And we are really indebted to you all. So thank you, research assistants. Woohoo! <laughs> And finally, I also need to recognize the individual BCRW staff members, each of whom have really taken on a special role in formulating the content of the, con of the conference and brought their scholarly and activist commitments to bear in shaping the substance of our conversations and the individual sessions themselves. Our staff includes Associate Director Tammy Navarro, right there in the middle. Our creative director, who always is in the shadows, uh, Hope Dector, right back there. And our community archivist and student coordinator, Che Gossett, who I cannot find in the room, but uh, they are here. <laughs> Additionally, I really need you to join me in a very enthusiastic round of applause for two people in particular. Um, these are the people who are truly the masterminds of coordinating the lion's share of the burden for the logistics of the conference, and they're most responsible for helping our entire team, particularly me, sleep well at night. <laughs> Those two people are our program manager, Avi Cummings, and our administrative assistant, Pam Phillips. Thank you. I, go, I wanna go from those announcements into just a few framing thoughts about the ideas that, that really do lie behind and um, are orienting this conference. Um, and I'm gonna do that in a particular way that there are a number of my students in this room and they will predict what I'm going to do, which is I always ask them to define their terms when they're talking uh, or when we are talking. And so I am going to honor that commitment to, to defining my terms and do the same thing myself. So I'm gonna begin with a definition and we're going to be very pedagogical and put it on the screen. And thank you, Krish, for making this sign, this, this slide. So, sustainabilities, uh, sustainability. 
harvesting or using a resource so that that resource is not depleted or damaged or permanently damaged, e.g., for example, sustainable techniques or sustainable agriculture. Second definition, able to be used without being completely used up or destroyed. Third definition, an ability or capacity of something to be maintained or to sustain itself. The concept of sustainability is a familiar trope. We hear it invoked by politicians, entrepreneurs, agriculturalists, and environmentalists most frequently. When I hear this term, I have to say that I usually associate it with a sense of restraint. My mind turns to questions of limitation, scarcity, finitude. I think about waste, and I find myself taking inventory of my responsibility to the wider population of the planet and the resources I and others um, have taken for granted or at times even squandered. The weight of that responsibility ricochets backward and forward in time to my ancestors and to my future descendants. And this spiral of associations and responses frequently ends for me in the twinned emotions of rage and helplessness. A desire to do much more, as well as a sense of the overwhelming burdens and hurdles that we face in the effort to do more. But I have to say that it's a different, though related, sense of, sus of sustainability that we are assembled here to explore. And it is a very different set of sensibilities that it invokes in me. About a year and a half ago, as I was beginning my term as director of BCRW, the question of sustainability began to preoccupy me in a markedly different way. As I began working with the extraordinary group of people who comprise the staff and the fellows of BCRW, and the long list of scholars, artists, activists, who are involved in the collaborative project that is BCRW, the term sustainability became a recurring refrain that emerged in many of our conversations. For and among us, the question of sustainability was, not, was, was about not being used up, not being eaten up, not being beaten up, or worked to death. It was about being able to do social justice work in ways that enriched our lives and allows us to, allowed us to thrive in the process. It's about being able to do the work we do in ways that support each other and create a future for our communities, our movements, and our creative, artistic, scholarly, and ethical practices. For those of us committed to social justice, sustainability is never singular. It's always plural and it is always intertwined with working with others. The sustainabilities that are in play amongst us are not the idea of living within limits that define contemporary notions of sustainability. The idea of sustainabilities is first and foremost a desire to challenge the limits of what is considered possible. This is the central provocation that motivates this conference. It's a provocation that I want to pose in the form of three questions. One, what are the resources we need to create and sustain social justice movements and critique? Two, how can we extend our capacities and push the limits of what is possible? And three, how can we enliven and invigorate our movements, institutions, and analysis in ways that break down existing limitations while sustaining our efforts, ourselves, and our communities? These are difficult questions to answer clearly. And it takes vision, drive, commitment, and imagination to answer them. And there is no other person that I can think of with more vision, drive, commitment, or imagination than the person we are privileged to have as our keynote speaker, Raina Gossett. <laughs> 